This is a collection of uh, Judy Martin. She gave 141 quilts. These are Amish quilts to the uh, Uni University of Southern Indiana. And these are on display. This is a grand opening here of her uh, display. And this is all the people in the USI um, Art Center, Mr. and Mrs. Pace Art Center. But you look at the quilts, there's not not all displayed, but there's 131, and that's Judy Martin, been collecting Amish quilts from southern Indiana since 1985 or 86, and all these quilts uh, have signatures of the women that made the quilts from our southwestern Indiana Amish community, and they're signed, and they describe the quilt to some degree on the back. This is very unique. You will not find a collection like this anywhere in the world. Uh, the Amish in Pennsylvania and the Amish in Northern Indiana don't quite do the same. And it's been Judy that has been the uh, stimulator of this uh, and inspire of this type of uh, collection. We're very fortunate, and this is the grand opening of the USI display uh, at, uh, in Evansville, Indiana. And today's date is 131 16. So these are some of the other quilts displayed here today. This is called Vibrant S Swirls, uh, machine piece and set, but hand quilted by Catherine Kemp, Montgomery, Indiana. Uh, a gift from uh, Thomas and Judy of All Martin in uh, Newburgh. Uh, this is similar to the color palettes used in this quilt, similar to the Drunkard's Path, uh, the quilt. This is what it looks like. Very well done. This is another quilt. It's called Drunkard's Path. And this one uh, was made in 2009 by Patricia Stone, S-T-O-L-L, -L, in Montgomery, Indiana. The pattern Drunkard's Path was especially popular in the uh, late 19th century and again 1930s when the revival and quilt making spread across America. The color palette used it's quite similar to the vibrant swirls. The quilt to the right, which I'll show you in just a moment, that I just showed you a minute ago. The difference is the background color, light sense dark, creates quite a contrast overall presentation of these quilts. So this is Drunkard's Path, uh, and this one as well, but lots of contrast in those two quilts. This is a wild geese quilt, it's very popular with the Amish community, but you see the uh, wings and the uh, feathered edges, uh, very symbolic of the uh, of the um, of the geese. Uh, the pairing, the wild geese, and Arkansas beauty highlights the impact of tourism on types of quilts that are made within the Amish community. There's a research named Linda Boynton that found at communities prior to 1950s when the cultural curtain between the Amish and the non-Amish was being lowered. The Amish quilter created quilts based on the very little contact with the world outside the community. As tourism focused on the as tourism focused on the Amish, the they began uh, making quilts and it became a valuable commodity. The style of quilts being made for sale and those used for the Amish home were different. This wild geese continues to be made and sold. There are more quilts like Arkansas Beauty being produced as well. What is not different is the high quality of craftsmanship is definitely the mark of the Amish quilt. This quilt was made again by Mary Stoll, S-T-O-L, in Montgomery, Indiana, and it was a block style quilt, machine pieced and set, hand quilted, cotton poly cotton fabrics, medium left loft polyester batting, block style 1997. This is a photograph of the Davis County community auction that happens every year, and this is a picture in 2012. But it's a uh, auction that happens this year. It happened. We attended it. About 900 quilts were auctioned. The lowest price is about 400. The highest price was about a 
$1,600, and that's how they display them at the auction. This is a lady, Lucille Dillon, that was in charge of uh, getting that auction going. She's now deceased, but it's uh, been a very important function for the Amish. If you look, this is the aisles that they haven't displayed before they start the auction. You have a chance to look at the artwork. But uh, this has been happening for over 30 years. Judy Laval Martin has uh, been attending that for the last 30 years and bought uh, several quilts each year. And she's donated all these to the USI collection. And uh, this is very unique um, uh, to Evansville, unique to the Amish community. Uh, this is Lucille Dillon, because she did so much work, she's recipient of the uh, Lieutenant Governor's Tourism Award. And and uh, namesake of the local Dillon Tours Award, was the biggest promoter of fine craftsmanship in Davies County Amish quilters. But she made this happen, made it popular for people to come and see the works of art and display them. There's another, there's another film. This uh, whole Davies Amish quilting auction was instituted by the late Lucille Dillon, David and Anna Wagner, and many others. And, uh, over a hundred quilts in the auction and this year I think we saw many many more than that uh, food it's a whole day of events this is just a description of the anatomy of a quilt uh, many people that are looking at this video already know how quilts are made but the Amish quilt designs uh, this is uh, the top layer that holds the piece of fabric that that creates the design and you have the filler layer uh, that's the second part, the filler layer here, that enhances the shape and so it brings out the quilt station. The backing layer protects the filler layer and completes the quilt. But you look at the detail of this, many of them are very similar. You have the quilt block that you have listed here. This is the quilt block, the border, the sashing between, uh, the posting, the binding right on the edge, and then the corner block. Um, this was described by Patricia Stoll, a very famous quilter there in the Montgomery, Indiana. And this is another gift by Tom and Judy Laval. But this is Amish Quilt Designs, uh, um, written by quilt historian Judy Ann Brenneman. Quilt by Amos A. Graber, who piece, and it's done in, 19, in 2004, uh, machine, uh, Applique, pieced and set, hard, hand quilted, cotton fabric, medium loft, polyester paddling. Amos A. Graber, many Gravers up in the Amish area. This was received in, um, as a gift from the Amos and Miriam Graber. They developed a friendship, still have, have a long, long friendship with Judy, the course of purchasing quilts many years. Amos Graber was the senior bishop of 760 households in southern Indiana Amish community. He made a small quilt for each of his 86 grandchildren. He was the father of 14 children, 241 great-grandchildren, and 43 great-great-grandchildren. Over 900 Amish Mennonite and English attended his wake and funeral when he died October 10th, 2012. Uh, his widow is still there. And uh, we did uh, talk to her this last uh, uh, year at the Amish uh, quilt event. Uh, but Judy uh, uh, befriended him, and they were became good friends over a long period of time, and got the blessing from Amos Graber, who was a senior bishop, and allowed her to make some collections and have uh, some of these people write on the bottom of it. If you look, this is a unique part about her quilts. If you look, this is signed by Amos A. Graber. December 2004. This is the bottom corner of the quilt. Very, very rarely do you find in an Amish quilt any signatures or any description of a quilt. But this is what is unique about Judy's collection in that she got signatures of the person that made the quilt. Now, Amos made this quilt and he made all the quilts I just said, but what a work of art that he had. This is a crown of thorns and a very symbolic, a very religious quilt in the Amish Mennonite quilting. But uh, this is described as a crown of thorns. This was uh, given by Marianne Knepp, K N E P P, in Montgomery, Indiana, made in 1999. 
um, pieced together by Mrs. David Yoder of Montgomery, Indiana, a very common name in the Amish community. Uh, quilters from the American colonial period, or specifically those seeking religious freedom in America, incorporated their religious beliefs into all aspects of their life and were known to give their stitching and quilt patterns biblical reference name. The pattern featured in these, this quilt is classified as biblical or religious themed quilt blocks that shared the events of Jesus Christ's crucifixion. The Amish Mennonite quilt features are the pattern called crosses and losses and symbolizes Jesus' crucifixion on the cross and the loss that was experienced by his followers. This pattern is solely built <clears throat> by on a triangle and creates the visual vibration uh, it creates a visual vibration that provides contemporary appeal. The crown of thorns uses the pattern by the same name, recalls biblical story of Jesus being forced to wear the crown made from the thorn bush prior to his crucifixion. The pattern uses both squares, you see the squares and triangles, to complete the circle of the crown that points and the points of the thorns. The highly graphic pattern is emphasized by the bold colors placed on a dark blue background. But this is the crown of thorns, very popular in the Amish Mennonite uh, community. This is another gift of, of Tom and Judy Laval. Um, it was block style, crown of thorns, uh, and uh, by both Mary Ann Knapp and David, uh, Mrs. David Yoder Montgomery. And this is a description of this uh, beautiful quilt. Just another view of a beautiful quilt. See the quilts here, just absolutely artworks. Some of the finest displays of Southern Indiana, Amish meaning the Amish across the world. Uh, Amish very popular in Pennsylvania, Northern Indiana. Unbelievable things I think we've ever had in our gallery. They are gigantic works of art, paintings with cloth and, and design and color. And we're so proud that, that um, we were able to be part of Indiana's bicentennial celebration and host this exhibit. But I want the two people who have been most instrumental in this to come up, and they're going to talk now. The first person is Susan Colarici Sauls. She is the registrar of the USI Art Collection, and she is the one that curated this show, put up this show, and provided all the wonderful informational cards that we have here that, that I'm sure you have all, I know many of you are excellent quilters, and probably know a lot already, but there is much to be learned on all of the cards that she's provided for these wonderful quilts. The other person, and you look so cute together, don't we? Let's give them a little hand. <laughs> Judy Morton. Judy and her, her late husband, Tom Morton, for many years went to annual quilt auctions of the Amish, Southern Indiana Amish, and became friends and patrons of them. And she and her husband decided to donate many pieces of their wonderful collection to USI, for which we're eternally grateful. It's a pleasure. And um, I'm, I don't know if you're saying anything, but I'm hoping she will say a little something today um, about about these quilts, but I'm going to just turn it over to the two of them. Thank you, Katie. Welcome, everyone, and thank you so much for coming out today to experience these amazing quilts we have on our walls. Now, as the registrar for the University Art Collection, I get surprise responses when people um, hear that we have the largest holding of Southern Indiana contemporary Amish quilts outside of Davies County. The question usually is, why quilts? And then they follow that up with, why contemporary Amish quilts? Well, American folk art expert Robert Shaw put it best when he said, Amish quilts are among the greatest treasures of American art. They represent a sense of design, color, and proportion unique to their creators, and offer a window into the inner lives of their sometimes reticent makers and the carefully shaped and controlled culture in which they live. 
Now the members of the Davis County Amish and Mennonite community are known for their high quality of design and craftsmanship. And that's the primary reason we took these quilts into our collection. The design and craftsmanship rival any other works, paintings, sculpture, other forms of art that we have in our collection. Each one displays techniques, color combinations, and patterns that represent both the traditional and also the contemporary style of quilting found in the Amish communities of Southern Indiana. Now, in late summer of 2013, former Dean Michael Lopez, who we're so happy he's here today, um, asked if I would work with Judy to help her organize her quilts. Little did I know I was walking into one of the most interesting learning experiences of my life. Now, I'm sure you've all heard of the book, Tuesdays with Maury. Well, I had Tuesdays with Judy for several <laughs> months. And we would, um, it, it, well, it was like a master class in quilting. We were in her beautiful Newburgh home on the riverfront. We'd have Frank Sinatra on the CD player, and we would sit and talk about quilts, the Amish community, and the lessons that she's learned from the friendships she's made there. She also taught me what to look for in quilts, what makes a quilt good. She also told me how to document them so that we have that information for our archives. So now I'm sharing this knowledge with all of you, and throughout the exhibit, You'll see information posters that discuss the greater Amish community and also the Davies County Settlement, which is ranked in one of the top five population-wise in North America. So we have a very large and diverse community here. And I do encourage you to read them because I think they're fascinating, and I'm, I'm sure you all will too. Um, and next to each quilt, you'll notice um, our quilt or pairings of quilts. Some of these quilts were paired together because they tapped into the same color palette, but they've been worked in two different, um, two different styles. Right on this wall here, you'll see wild geese. That's the more traditional graphic Amish style quilt. And next to it, in similar color tones, is Arkansas Beauty. So we've tried to pair some of these together to where you can see the similar color palette or the similar style. And also, if you look back here, this one, this one always fascinates me. All three of these patterns are all, or quilts are all broken star patterns. So you'll notice they all have that same block in the center that breaks up in color, mm -hmm. but they're all done in different styles, where the one in the center is a more sedate and relaxing visual experience. The ones on the end are just electric and vibrate. And those, those are the most traditional style of the Amish community. And what makes them so is the uh, Amish in the Midwest were known, their, their style is different than their cousins in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, which is another large settlement. The Lancaster Amish would use a more mellow tone, um, more sedate colors and larger blocks. And they, they have been referred to as the first abstract painters of America because of the way their quilts look. Where the Midwestern Amish take on the brighter colors with the dark background to have that high electric contrast. So with each of these panels, which I do encourage you again to read, um, we'll have a lot of that explanation of what makes them good, what makes them traditional or contemporary, or what was going through perhaps the quilt maker's mind as they put it together. And then you'll also notice too, um, my word which I told um, Dean Dixon, I found it on the internet so I know it's real, is quiltology, which of course is the study of quilts, which is what I have done for the last couple of years. So each of those little boxes will have a little tidbit of quiltology in that for you all to enjoy. Now, my greater hope for this collection and for all this information is that it will spark students and faculty members' <coughs> curiosity to explore this collection not just as quilts, but as um, artistic significance of the quilts, get into that, and then also investigate the communal living of the uh, Amish community the economic impact that these quilt auctions have on their community. And I would also like to finally close with thanking several people that have helped make this possible. Dr. Stella Ress and the Spring 2015 Art and Heritage Administration students transcribed the information on the reverse of these quilts. I, I don't encourage you to touch them, but on the reverse, you'll see each one has written <coughs> by Judy a wealth of information about the quilt maker, what makes it a good quilt, what to look for, and, and just 
all kinds of historical information about it. So that's sewn on the back. And our students went through, photographed that information, and then transcribed it all for our archives. So that information is available for study. Also, of course, I want to thank Katie Waters for letting me come in here and take over the gallery and curate. This is such a wonderful space, and I can't imagine a better place on campus to have such large pieces. Um, Jack Ashley and Jennifer Nicewanger are assistants to Katie, and they both help with the installation. David Hubner and Tana Small are Sanders Fellow. She also, both of them, helped getting these quilts up on the wall. They had a system that worked. Each quilt weighs about five and a half to six pounds. So getting up a ladder and getting those in the wall was, was quite a task and I do appreciate that. And of course, a special thank you to my, to my husband, Dan Sauls, who um, helped me design the support rails for the quilts. Um, on a bitterly cold and rainy Sunday afternoon, he was outside cutting all the pieces that I needed to make these. So I am very much in his debt. Um, and now I'm very proud to introduce my friend Judy Morton. Judy holds a bachelor's degree in elementary education from USI and was the 2015 recipient of the Alumni Service Award for her commitment and dedication to the university community. Judy has also established the Thomas J. Morton Jr. Engineering Scholarship Endowment to honor her late father-in-law. Judy's a member of the USI Alumni Presidents Association and the prestigious C. Wayne Worthington Legacy of a Lifetime Giving Society. So please welcome Judy. You know, I was always a caretaker of quilts when I started, started buying quilts. And it's been a pleasure for 25 years to buy beautiful textiles of the Amish people of our area of the state, Southern Indiana. Quilting represents time binding like no other household object. We all have a story to tell about a quilt that are, came into our family in some way or another. It's a sweet story and means a lot personally and collectively because Michael Akas was so smitten with one of the early quilts that was donated to the foundation. He said, we want that for our collection. So I immediately gave the quilt to Michael for his collection at the university after I'd already given it to another part of the university and my late husband said, you mean you took back the quilt you gave to give it to him? He said, you gotta give another one away. So that's how it started. Uh, Michael was very uh, pleased to recognize the, that quilts do matter in historical perspective and that uh, they weren't anonymous. They were all identified, which was part of my, F well, a significant part of my effort. I didn't want to produce, I didn't want to collect a quilt that I could not know who the maker was because she was important and it was important to tell her story in her quilt, not through words, but through her, through the look, the way the quilt looked to me. We bought quilts that we liked. They spoke to us in a way that another one might not have. So. I was fortunate enough to be able to buy the ones we wanted. And then my late husband decided, well, he'd buy the ones he wanted. So they always, I mean, we came home with quite a few quilts. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to thank uh, General Eric Schwinker for taking me all over the country to get my quilts appraised so that I could donate them to the university because more people could see them and enjoy them and in their own way in, uh, find something meaningful. Andrea Gentry was the sweet lady who encouraged me to do this and Katie Waters and Matthew and Susan Sauls came and my, what a joy. She told me really who I was. <laughs> and I'm a lot older than she is. It took a long time for me to find out. <laughs> so. She selected the quilts that she thought you would enjoy and represented some aspect of the quilts. Now, if you want to buy one for yourself, you can go to Lucille Dillon's Amish auction the Saturday before Labor Day each year. So 
I encourage you to go just for the spectacle because it's such fun. Are there any questions about anything? And I'm just overwhelmed that they want that Michael and that wanted these and made it possible for them to accept them. Susan's hard work. I love her. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I think it was 1976, that was our bicentennial year, was that and there was a big auction? push. I always bought my quilts at auction. I wanted fair price. I wasn't asking for a deal. I wanted them to get it fair and square, so that's that's how it happened. Well, it's beautiful. I'm glad you like it. If you enjoy it, I'm happy. So, thank you. All right, thank you very much. Just Continue. Well, the Amish Broken Star. You see the Amish Broken Star. We'll describe that to some degree here. This is uh, some of the summary of this, but it's uh, given by Joanne Schwartz and Truber in Montgomery, Indiana. This. Uh, Southern Indiana Broken Star is a visually a soft contemporary interpretation of this pattern. The selection of earth tones and quilt stitching pattern of sunflowers in the squares that break the star evoke the image of farmland of Southern Indiana in contrast to that peaceful image. The Amish Broken Star is the modern version of traditional Midwestern Amish style using bold color on a black background. This quilt radiates the bold and bright colors of the twinkling star as each diamond of color is quilted with black thread. Within the squares, the break that break the star and in the negative space of the floral star image is repeated throughout the quilting stitches. You see that in all three, all four of these quilts that are located here in the display room at the University of Southern Indiana on 13116. This is another description. It's called the Star of Bethlehem, Joshua's Star. It's uh, given by Anna and David Wangler. Wagler of Montgomery, Indiana. These quilts, this quilt is a good example of two popular designs of the block style and medallion style. Both styles <coughs> evolved during the late 17th century through the 20th century into familiar formats recognized today. The Amish as a whole came to the quilting late in the 19th century and both styles were established by this time. The block style is shown by the Amish sparkling star is quite simply a quilt composed of block patterns of any size or shape. The American historians believe that the block style quilting was the result of few resources and a lifestyle that favored functionality. The medallion style, as illustrated by the Star of Bethlehem, uh, Star of Bethlehem is a quilt designed around a center, a central motif, and may be enhanced by additional blocks featuring multiple borders. Every medallion quilt are made of a whole cloth, which is fabric that has not been pieced together and evolved to include piece fabric patterns. Although this design style dates back to the earliest made quilts, the term medallion was first used by historians during the quilt revival that took place during the early 20th century. Just the beautiful pieces of art that you see displayed given by uh, Judy Laval. another very important style that you see in the Amish quilting. This is called the Log Cabin Star. Um, this was given by Anna and David Wagler of Montgomery. 
The traditional log cabin blocks are composed of strips of fabric around a square. And one half the block is made with light colored fabric while the other half is made with dark colored fabric. This quilt manipulates a traditional log cabin square block into diamond shape to create a contemporary looking star or snowflake medallion. But this is called the log cabin star, very common in the Amish community. This is a celebration of the University of Southern Indiana, Indiana Amish tradition. These are drawings from the USI Martin Quilt Collection given by Judy and Tom Martin. This exhibit is going from January 24th through March 13th, 2016. And it is a contemporary quilt, quilt makers and quilting tradition of Southern Indiana Amish. What about this collection? On behalf of the University of Southern Indiana Art Collection Committee, the McCutcheon Art Center, Pace Galleries, welcomes the quilting in community, a celebration of Southern Indiana Amish tradition. The members of the Davies County Amish and Mennonite community are known for their high quality design and craftsmanship. It is the primary reason why these quilts were accepted as artworks for the USI collection. It was a great difficulty that these 20 quilts out of 131 that were given are worthy for exhibition. Each one on display illustrates a technique, color combination, or pattern that is represented the contemporary style of quilting found in the Amish community in Southern Indiana. Susan Sauls is the art collection registrar that just spoke recently. The other people that helped this exhibition, Dr. Stella Ress, AHA 301 Spring Class, including students Carrie Carnes, Paul Goodman, Dylan Stevens, Roger Streming, for transcribing the extensive historical information on the reverse of these quilts. This is a unique part of this quilt. These quilts is that Judy asked for them to describe the important history of the quilter and the quilter's life on the back. And these have been transcribed or available for researchers. Other people that are helpful to this exhibit, Katie Walters, gallery director, Jack Ashley and Jennifer Nieswanger, assistants to the gallery, the director David Hubner, artwork supervisor, Tana Hall, S Sanders Fella, Dan Sauls, and the gallery assistants for exhibition and preparation. This is the Crossroads of America, and this is the Indiana uh, State Quilt, uh, and the style of the quilt was 1987, given by Judy. This is the brief history of the history of the Amish quilting, uh, written a uh, uh, quote by Robert Shaw, American Quilts, Democratic Art. Amish quilts are among the greatest treasures of American art. They represent a sense of design, color, and proportion unique to their creators, and offer a window into the inner lives as their sometimes ret reticent makers and are carefully shaped and controlled the culture in which they live. Quilting in the United States appeared in the early 1800s, but due to time-consuming process, was not a common practice among the early Americans. The Amish, located in Pennsylvania and Ohio, began quilting much later than their non-Amish counterparts. Evidence of these early Amish-made quilts are dated between the years 1860 and 1870, but most surviving quilts are placed in the early 20th century, leading to one to believe that it was not customary task for the Amish woman before this era. About the time of the early Amish quilts, early Amish made quilts were appearing, a group of Amish and Mennonite settlers from Switzerland by way of Canada were coming to Indiana. Soon to follow were the Amish peoples from Pennsylvania and Ohio, who it may be assumed brought along skills for quilting. Early Amish patterns were composed of large geometric shapes and representational images were avoided so the quilts would not be considered idolatrous. Over time, each region and each community developed their own style in creating quilts and the introduction of block style, block technique changing the quilt compositions. This style evolution occurred as a result 
of the different cultural traditions, social changes, and mechanical adaptations adopted within each community. The Midwestern Amish communities of the past, like those found in Southern Indiana, produced quilts that favored the easier to use cotton fabrics, unusual bright color combinations, and the placement of wider, broader, to the frame quilt blocks and medallion designs. Many of these traditions are still evident in contemporary quilts being produced today. This is an example of the Diamond Square made about 2000 by Ann and David Wagler of Montgomery, Indiana. This is the original of this same, I just said the Diamond Square. Um, and the Diamond Square block is an older pattern that is said to reflect the Christian belief, which are the foundation of the Amish religious tradition. Diamond shape represents, or diamond shapes are repeated in this quilt, are the symbol of Jesus Christ, and the quilted tulip shapes act as traditionally lily motif, which represents purity and immortality. This is the Star Spangled Banner Patriotic Pinwheel. Pinwheel is a common pattern they use. This was pieced by Lydia Stoll Montgomery and quilted by Dolores Kemp in Montgomery. This patriotic theme was made in response to our national tragedy in the, tragedy in the United States. It occurred 9-11-11. The Mark Collection has four patriotic quilts that were made during this period. These two quilts. Uh, the, the one on the left here is Lady of the Lake, and it's called World Gig on the right. These are block styles. Um, they were made by the Lady of the Lake. This one in front here is made by Lydia Stoll in Montgomery. The World Gig is made was made by Amos and Miriam Graber in Montgomery, Indiana. This is this one. It's called the World Gig. Uh, both quilts illustrate. Um, how to successfully use color pattern and the exclusive use of triangle design. A visually energetic composition, the Lady of the Lake, which is this one, creates a tension with the orderly use of triangle in both positive and negative shapes, while the pinwheel pattern of the whirlwind of the whirlwind generates a circular motion with the seemingly random placement of color and pattern fabric triangles. Each quilt corals its, it corrals its energy through the interior portion of placement, of placement, order placement, and the traditional Midwestern Amish use of the wide outer border. The quilting stitches added technical complexity of these quilts. The Lady of the Lakes features a heavy amount of quilting stitches within quilt blocks. An undulating snake stitch pattern that breaks up the space between the center of the quilt and its corners. The world gig is the same, same amount of quilting stitches within the body of the quilt and employs cross patch on the quilt stitch to the borders. This is the world gig. It's a closer up view of the world gig. Beautiful quilts. This is called the Holler Tube Color Wheel. Block style quilt made in 2008 by Gladys R. Whitmer, Montgomery, Indiana. The hollow cube in this quilt is a variation of one of the oldest uh, piece patterns, the hexagon or honeycomb. In making a hollow cube, experts share that the key to creating an effective, effective visual illusion is how to carefully compose the hexagon box with gradations of color. Hollow cube color wheel places lighter colors on top and darker colors on the bottom to successfully generate the three-dimensional illusion. Quotology is written by a, in, 19, or in 1835 by Gotti, Get Gotti's Ladies Book, a popular periodic of the time period, published the hexagon pattern. Gotti's is considered the first American periodic to print.
print quilt patterns. You look at the differences there that describe well. This is a simple schoolhouse. This was uh, quoted by Phyllis Gray, piece by Dorothy Wagner. This quilt is uh, lap size, miniature of the Lager Schoolhouse, block style quilt given to the university by, by Judy Martin. This is one of the three schoolhouses pattern quilts of the Martin Collection. Quiltology, this is a, this quilt is an example of quilting in the ditch. Quote, quilting in the ditch. The term quilting in the ditch refers to the method of sewing quilting stitches directly in the fabric seam or placing them just beside the seam. The technique enhances the shape or pattern of the quilt. So this is called quilting in the ditch. Again, the term quilting in the ditch refers to the method of sewing quilting stitches directly in the fabric seam or placing them just beside the seam. This technique enhances the shape or pattern of the quilt. One last part of history, the Amish community. The Amish community are, Christ, are a Christian church that traces its roots to the Protestant Reformation in the 16th century in Europe. Amish people accept basic Christian beliefs, but also have their some special interpretation and emphasis that have emerged throughout history. The population of the Amish is on the rise. There's an increase in both population and settlements. This population growth attributed to families with five or more children and a steady retention rate of 85% for Amish children who join the church as young adults. The surge of settlements accommodates enlarging populations they move to places with fertile farmland or non-farm work and specialized occupations. 74 districts, congregation of 20 to 40 families added in North America from 2014 to 15. Diversity, the diversity of the greater Amish community is composed of 40 known affiliations with this religious tradition. Members of the singular communities abide by the traditions and decisions of their leadership in the areas of like dress, style of dress, mode of transportation, choice of occupation, and use of technology. These traditions and decisions impact the culture within the community and make it difficult to define the Amish as a whole. Forty different known affiliations of Amish religious traditions, occupations, Less than 10% in the communities receive their primary income from farming. Occupations of the Amish center around sustaining the community. While farming was once the dominant means of support, the expanding population and limited amount of available land in established communities has given way to small businesses. The Amish are using their talent in construction, food service, handicraft items, tourism, and working for non-Amish businesses. Zero tolerance for use of television, radios, and computers in the Amish home. The use of technology in each community seeks to preserve the traditional Amish style lifestyle and govern the use of things that require electrical power, the telephone, the automobile. Rather than view this as a restriction, it becomes a positive challenge to invent new tolerance technology to make accommodations that are compatible with their lifestyle. Excellent summary of the Amish community. At the final of this day, today is uh, 13117. Uh, the relationship between Susan Sauls and Judy Martin started about three years ago when Judy gave her collection to USI and they've described it earlier, but this has just been a phenomenal day. It's a phenomenal collection. Susan has put descriptions along each, uh, each one of these quilts and an excellent description of the Amish history. Judy has preserved something over the last 30 years that's so unique to Southern Indiana, so unique to the Amish community, so unique to the world that we've captured this piece of art and we've shown that at University of Southern Indiana. And thanks to both of them, this has happened. Maybe a few comments of how the road has been to get this accomplished for Susan and Judy. Um, it all started with Judy sharing the information with me and 
my own natural curiosity. I was the weird kid who liked to write research papers. I just started to research and learn as much as I could about the Amish in general, Amish in the southern Indiana, and also quilts and different techniques about quilts, different patterns, and, and how their origins came to be. Your documentation is superb. The descriptions on each quilt is very succinctly done but very clear and gives the artist a, a, a great amount of credit. So that's very difficult to do. And all the descriptions on the back that you've had the students document, There's doc that's one of the unique things that Judy required of these quilts is documentation of the artist. So many that's, that's what makes it the very special because we have this information. A lot of quilt collections don't have it. Many, most yes. quilt collections don't have it. And that was foresight of Judy to say, I want to know about the artist. Yes. I want to know more about the artist. As you look at Vincent van Gogh, unless he had his brother that documented things, we would know very little about right. Vincent himself. This is the same thing of all these women and men quilters, but mostly women in the Amish community. And even the one that was behind you when we talked of the bishop and did all the children there. And Judy, for you to get the bishop to see uh, the wisdom in showing this to the world, that is a godsend. It would be very few that would be able to, the, for very few bishops to understand that their art is so worthwhile. But that's a very much foresight of yours and Tom way back in the 80s to get them to describe their art. That's very seldomly done because it's all uh, art interpretation of what we are seeing and what it means. But to have the artist, it's very important. Can you tell us a little bit about your journey and experience of, of how enjoyable it was? And we went, we went to the to the Amish, collect, uh, the Amish uh, auction this year with you, and it was just a joy to see you interact with all the Amish people, and I could see the love of the Amish people for you. It was just they came arm in arm, and I think his widow, Mrs. Graber, was there, and just the whole Amish community knows you're genuine, know you care about their art, and they took time to do that, but they do know that now. Um, can it you? was a joy, and yeah. thank you, Dr. Mark Browning, yeah. for your interest in this and for running this video, share this information with the, per, the people who access this site. Well, it was a joy to work with the Amish people through Lucille Dillon at first, to get to know the senior bishop of the Amish community, Dr. Um, Amos Graber, and it was with his permission that these quilts are shown in the way he would approve with the other bishops concurring. They said, well, you bought the quilts, so you go ahead and show them. So everything passed through Amos's hands, first of all, and he was very kind to open his heart and life to show the quilts and share them. I was always just a caretaker anyway, so. You've helped it be a window to the world. And uh, Susan, you both, I, we did a video on you both about Please about three years ago, and we have 12,000 YouTube hits on it now. And we're going to make this part of the USI archives for future people and for future students and for future recruits to the University of Southern Indiana art community. And so uh, we thank you for all your hard work. Thank you. This is why quilts matter. Yes, they thank do you. matter. Okay. Thank you.